Hello, Seven Days listeners. How are you? Hello, everybody. I hope you're well. Mm. Welcome back to another episode. Thank you for coming back. Uh, we have got an epic episode for mm. you today, don't we, Dan? We sure do. I'm very excited about this one. It is very good. Who do we have, Dan? Or, or are we keeping it a surprise? <sighs> oh, let's keep it a surprise. Okay. Okay. Let's keep it as we went with that one on the flow. We'll keep it a surprise, I reckon. <laughs> I mean, but you'll find out in about five minutes, not you even will, two you minutes. Will. <laughs> and it's a terrific episode. However, we do need to give you a little fine print moment right now. And that is that there were some small difficulties in our audio recording of this episode. Yeah. However, the content is all there. Mm-hmm. It just might not. There might be some weird sounds that you hear every now and then or something that, you know, isn't normal. Mm-hmm. Just bear with us and have a listen. Enjoy the content because it is a great episode. It's worth it. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. It was very good. It was very good. And behold, it was very good. And God All right, saw here we are, Seven Days made. Podcast. Welcome Yet again. Back. Shush, we're still around. We're still here. We're still here. We're still doing our thing. And today we have us. today we have something quite special, I think. We sure do. I was saying probably our most high profile guest we've had. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and she's amazing. And we're gonna find out more about her. But I am Dan. I'm Shush, and today we have Sylvie Paladino. Yay! 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 Yes! Yes! <laughs> it's always so interesting over virtual reality, basically, isn't it? With all yes. this stuff. We do need a live crowd cheering or something. No, Maybe we, we can need do a that bit one of a day. machine that does the, you know, the audience yeah. participation. Yeah. <laughs> We'll edit it in afterwards, yes, just so crap. Yeah, we'll put well. canned laughter in and things like that. It'll be great. I don't do anything without an audience, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> we're well, performers. Well, Sylvie, yeah. we, we're going we're gonna to go deep with you. However, okay. oh, not we're going to s- oh, look out. <laughs> we're going to start off with some quite surface level questions that are okay. a bit of fun. So. Right. What we want to hear is kind of like the first answer that comes to mind. Don't think about it too much. Just right. just let it flow. So Shush is going to start with our fast five. It's a 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 fast five. Here we go. Question number one. Who is your favourite person to travel with? My manager. Oh, nice. Mark Gogol. Okay. Okay. Good, Good answer. answer. Good answer. <laughs> All right. I've actually changed my question because I've felt something oh. else calling. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Are you ready for this? Yes. Sylvie, I class you as the queen of carols. Right. So my question is, when is it okay to start listening and singing Christmas carols? I would say December 1st. You know, when you put your Christmas yeah. tree up, yeah. you don't want to peak too soon. You Do know, you know what? Problem. We've, we got more in that question, question answer oh. because you said that's when you put your Christmas tree up too. So December 1st, oh, Christmas December tree 1st. and carols. Yeah. It's when it begins. Sylvie has spoken. Yes. Well it. done. That's very that's wise. Cool. Yeah, that's yeah. wise. <laughs> okay, random question. Yeah. Question number three. What is something you can't cook? Oh. Or is that? Can you just cook everything? No, my husband would say meat. Oh. <laughs> okay. Can I, can I elaborate on that? Yes, you so elaborate. Can. My meat has to be like burnt. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No yeah. pink. Yeah. No yeah. pink. It's got to be yeah. grey, right? Mm-hmm. My, mm-hmm. my husband calls it Jesus' sandal. <laughs> <laughs> His meat is like still mooing. It's yeah, okay. <laughs> so he would say meat. I think I cook it fabulously. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's a great answer. Yeah, that's a that. great that is a yeah. great answer. Yeah. All right. So, fourth question. Yes. Would you rather only to be able to communicate in song constantly or only only to be able to communicate with a microphone? So you know those little like ah. buskers have the packs with the microphone? 
So you can only talk or communicate with a microphone or in song. What are you picking? Oh, that's a, that's a question, Dan. Question oh and a half. Gosh. I feel like my fast um, five are on point today. I would pro- oh, <laughs> probably say song. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 But that's that's, fair. Yes, that's scares the heebie-jeebies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look, to be honest, I don't think I could be friends with someone that only oh, communicated yeah. in song, but oh. at least it would sound good if you were doing it. It would sound better than me doing it, right? Like, I don't know. I'd probably get very tired by the <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's yes, true. Yes. <laughs> awesome. And our last question comes yes. from one of our listeners, which oh. is very exciting. This comes from Joel, who's been an avid listener for seven oh, days. Oh, yes, he has avid, a very <laughs> avid listener for seven very days. Very avid listener <laughs> for seven days. Um, he says, if you could have a meal with four people, living or dead, who would you choose? Oh, this is big. <gasps> There's so that's many options. Hard, that's a really hard one because my, yeah. my immediate thing is my – my family, my husband, yeah. my kids, yeah. and myself, we're four, right? Yeah. But then I think, oh, my grandparents, because all four yeah. of them have passed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that would be incredibly special. Yeah. 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 Nah, we'll take that. I like that. That's a good answer. We'll make it, we'll make it a meal for eight, I think. Yeah, yeah let's do we that. can expand it. We can do yeah. that. Good, good. Well, there I'm we go. Right. We've you survived, survived the past five. Oh, thank How God. do you feel? Yeah, oh, weight I off feel the shoulders? Li- I'm liberated, yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so there good. we go. That's good it's fun. Past five. Now, um, what we might do to start off with then, Sylvie, is. Um, yeah. For those people who are possibly listening that don't know who you are, yeah. um, are you able to provide a little bit of a, I guess, backstory of who you are, what your upbringing was kind of like, and what's got you to where you are now? Okay. Uh, how do I do this quickly? That's right. right. So yeah. I'm one of four children to um, my parents, Luigi and Norma. Um, they are both immigrants, one from Egypt, mum from Egypt, dad from Italy. Came out in 55, 56. Um, I'm the third of four children, so I have two sisters older than me and a brother after me. Um, we had very humble, um, you know, a yeah. working class family. Uh, we just, dad, mum and dad worked to get by. Never had any luxuries, um, but we never felt like we were missing out on anything at all. Um, Very loving, in-your-face European family. Mm -hmm. Uh, Always surrounded by extended family. So my grandparents lived, you know, two blocks down the road and an auntie lived around the corner. So, you know, we're always, always together. That's Mm -hmm. been my life. Um, I started singing at the age of nine. Um just because I loved it and I was good at it. Um, hated school. Mm. Yeah, right. I yeah, I can say relate. That, but hated school. Um, loved to sing. And, mm. um, yeah, singing became something I would do at family functions um, and competitions, but never with any intent of doing it for a living. I did not, not have that on my radar at all. Mm. Um, it wasn't until I was... Uh, 14 when I entered Young Talent Time, which was a competition, um, and I won that sort of was a springboard into the industry. I wanted to be a contemporary singer like a Barbara Streisand, mm-hmm. Whitney Houston, that sort of serious ballad singer. Yeah. Um, so I did that. I never sort of, in those days, I didn't fit the mould. The mould was very much a Caucasian-looking, yeah. um, you know, girl next door, and I, I didn't look like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I had very big hair, very thick eyebrows. <laughs> you know, now that's fashionable in those days. It's just you know, really woggy, and we were trying to get away from that. I mean, I, Ken's heard this story a thousand times, but I was born Silvana. Um, but I had to change my name because Silvana was too Italian. 
Yeah, okay. So I changed my name to Sylvie, dropped Palladino entirely. So I was like Madonna or Rihanna. Oh, I was Sylvie. Yes. You know, the one yes. name. Oh, the one okay. name girl. Yep, yeah, yeah. Yep. And, um, and then when I was 17, I landed the role of Eponine in Les Mis and, and it all changed. I then was able to take on Palladino again. Um, my look was working for me and um, I found this new love that I, I felt like I belonged in the group with the people. Um, I loved that camaraderie in the theatre. I loved portraying the story through song. Um, yeah, and it sort of opened up a whole new side of the industry for me. Mm, yeah. um, but because of my contemporary background, it then meant when I was not doing theatre, I was able to, you know, go into a concert and not be freaked out by that because I was doing that yeah. as a young girl anyway. Yeah. Um, so it's just meant that my life as an entertainer, as a performer, has been quite versatile. I've been so blessed yeah. to do so many different things. Um and, yeah, then I, through our theatre, I've met my husband, we got married, I've got two beautiful children, Christian, who's 21, Bella, who's 18. Um, we've got two dogs. Um, we live a really regular life. Um, mm. And I go off and do my little things when I, when I can, <laughs> when I'm allowed out of my house, that is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and I've got a great family network with my husband and my parents that, you know, look after the family when I'm away. Mm. Um, what else can I tell you about myself? I don't have any extra hobbies, really. I, I still love hanging out with my extended family. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah um, that's about it. That's well, great. Yeah, that is awesome. It's a bit boring, isn't it? No, no. no. Not at all. I loved it. And what... I'm I'm just gonna list some stuff because, yeah. like, if if people are listening that don't know who you are, yeah, Sylvie has been in Les Mis, Cats, Miss Saigon, Mamma Mia, The King and I, Jerry's Girl. She's also Green Room Award nominated shows. Sylvie Palladino sings Streisand, oh. which you mentioned that that's who you wanted to kind of be like, which is awesome. <laughs> and yeah. Florence in Chess. You did an Australian tour with Michael Bolton? Yeah. That's correct, right? That's, yep. Yeah, that was really How fun. exciting. Yeah. You were at AFL Grand Final, NRL Grand Final, Boxing Day Test Match, and you did a concert at the Beijing Olympics. <laughs> That's amazing. That's like, amazing. Just, you're just what, showing people how old I am. But we're just <laughs> like, like, I know you're you said. legit. Like, yeah, you're legit. You've, you've done a lot, just yeah. in I case have, I, I've and been you're very, not aware of that. Blessed, very blessed. <laughs> yes. Oh, also, I'd, it would be silly of me not to mention Carols by Candlelight. Consistently oh. the best singer at Carols by Candlelight every oh. year. So, like, yeah, just for our listeners, Sylvie has done a lot. She has been very blessed and also obviously very talented. Yeah. Um, and it hasn't just come to you. It's obviously something you've worked for. Yeah. Um, I will ask, though, mm-hmm. So we've got a bit of the background story of who you are. How does the spiritual side of things kind of relate to that? Like what's kind of the, like we know you as, as a Christian person. Um, yeah. how, like what was that journey kind of like? Was that from an early age? What, what was that like? So I was, my family are Catholics. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, we were a Catholic family. So I went through all my sacraments, you know, baptism as a baby, not even... I'm understanding what that was. Uh, I think I was three months old. <laughs> yep, um, yep, yep, yep. And then, you know, my Holy Communion and my confirmation. Um, Greg and I were married in a Catholic church. Um, I, I've always been brought up knowing God. Mum is very much just naturally a spiritual person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the Lord just made her like that, yeah. just connected to that side of herself. Yeah. Um, so we always had that input from mum. Um, but it wasn't until I got into Miss Saigon where I met um, a lot of the Filipino company, uh, very spiritual, predominantly yeah. Catholic, but very spiritual, more so than any other Catholic I had met up until that point. Yeah. Um, and so it was through them that it sort of just sparked 
the interest in this God that I knew, but he, it was just a figure that I knew of rather than yeah. a personal relationship with him. Yeah. Um, and so it was through a song that uh, one of the girls played me called More Than Wonderful, Sandy Patty's version of mm. More Than Wonderful. Um, that sort of sparked that, oh, I, I want to know more about the God in that song. That's not the God that I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our upbringing was more about the God of fear, the God of, yeah. oh, yep. you know, he's yep. looking down on you. It, it was very scary. It wasn't about the God of love. Certainly there was no talk of having a relationship with God, you know. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So um, that sort of sparked that interest and it was through that at the same time my mum and my second sister started going to an evangelical Christian church mm. and they then were baptised. So by the time I arrived home from Sydney where I was doing this Saigon, they had already been baptised and were going to this church. So then that sort of meant it was okay for yeah. me, I felt it was okay yeah. to sort of, you know, have a look into that sort of side of things. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's where it sort of started. That's yeah. how my, yeah. my faith started. And, mm. you know, I always... I always talk about this in ministry, you know, you never feel, well, I certainly didn't feel worthy. I didn't feel ready. I felt like I needed to be, I needed to be ready to be a Christian. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I didn't feel like I, I, I had to get my act together before I could say, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. I'm a Christian. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> especially, especially publicly and especially being a, a person that people might know of me. I felt like it was a real responsibility to yeah. come out and go, you know, I'm a believer, when yeah. I felt like I didn't have my life together. Yeah. But God's got it together. You know, the yeah. whole point is I don't have it together. Yes. Yeah. He yeah. has it, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, so it took me a while to actually really, I always talk about my, my faith as opening the door to God, and I was really excited to do that. But I always yeah. kept the fly screen there for many years. Yeah. yeah. Just, I was just a bit nervous to really let him in. So yeah. I kept him at a distance mm -hmm. for quite some time. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. And I, I love that it was a, a song that kind of sparked that, I guess. Uh, I know how appropriate. It, right. The Lord so knew appropriate. I, I know how to get to this girl. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You took the words out of my mouth, yeah, right? Yeah, like God yeah, knows us yeah. so well that yeah, he's like, yeah. I know what language you yeah. speak. I know the yeah. creative language. Yeah. I got you. you and, know. you know, music is so, isn't it? It's so powerful. Oh, it's yeah. like so a powerful. direct line to your spirit, whether it's Christian music or not. It just... Yeah. It yep. takes you to that place, that moment, the emotions yeah. you felt, uh, the yeah. smells that were in the air. Like, it's just so incredible. It's such, yeah, yeah it's an incredible gift that he's given us. Yeah. 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 And now, a celebration story. And we want to recognise and, and throw on them. Because we want to share them on the podcast. Woo! If you have celebration stories, reach out to us. <laughs> <laughs> We will honour it all. All right, celebration stories. Hey, Shush, I believe that something came across your desk that deserves a mention in our celebration story time. It sure does. I got Ooh. an email uh, the other day about something really cool that happened at the Salvos in Mandurah. I hope I've said yeah. that right. I'm so sorry if you're from this place and I've said it wrong. But Mandra place. in Western Australia, I'm going, go hard, go home. Uh, <laughs> but they, on the 7th of September, had a painting morning that was raising awareness for Anti-Poverty Week. So they had the painting morning and then they had a lunch afterwards all about uh, having these conversations to talk about poverty and financial hardship. And it was with the Salvation Army's Money Care Program over there. Um, and so... It's just really cool. I just love that we're using the creative arts to raise awareness of these social issues and partnering with all the different aspects of the Salvation Army. I mean, I just got an email. I don't even know the details of it, but I just want to give out give a shout out to Captain Scott Ellery, who's over mm. there, the uh, yep. Money Care team, 
I think Joe Brookshaw did like a helped out with some of like the art specific stuff. Yes, of course. And of I course. think that's just really cool. Like a fun morning yep. where the community uh, can come and paint a depiction of what poverty means to them. You know, no skill or experience mm. needed. All the art stuff was provided, and then you have lunch afterwards, just to yes. spark those conversations. And I thought that yes. was really cool and worth celebrating. Yes, I agree with you. A great example of collaborating yeah, together in the arts for something bigger than what we are. So that's that it. is awesome, Shush. And this is also a great reminder for people who uh, know of people that are doing great things or know of events that are happening that deserve this celebration. Please send these to us because we will mention them on here. Uh, we think there's a lot of great stuff going on and we want to shine a light on that as much as possible. So well done, Shush. Thanks. So I guess one of the things I'm interested in, I actually come from a theatre background as well, so I relate to all your talking about the theatre and the family of theatre. Um, I guess I was wondering if you wouldn't mind sharing what your experience has been like being a Christian in an industry that is very secular, right? Um, (laughs) With people of lots of super diverse, people of all different opinions. Mm -hmm. How is it like holding your faith? Like in the sense of not, I mean, whatever your experience is in, Mm -hmm. but being strong in your own identity and being strong in like, hey, this is who God has created to me and I have my own faith and all that in an industry that is very different. Um, Would you speak to that? Yeah. Um, Look, early on, I, you know, when you've got that initial fire for the Lord, yeah, um, it was um, for me, it was a slow burn. Yeah. So I sort of was a little bit quiet. Yep. Mm. I wasn't outwardly, you know, some people they they get set on fire by the Lord and they're talking to everyone and <laughs> oh, this happens and yeah. you feel this yeah. and oh, He does this for you know, it changes your life. Blah, blah. Um, I remember my sister, I was like, okay, can you, we not talk about anything else, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I wasn't like that. It was a bit of a slow burn. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I would only really um, talk to people, and I'm still a little like that. Yeah. If someone asks me, then I will be yes. forthright with that information. But yes. I'm not one to go, did you know about Jesus? Jesus you'll <laughs> save your life. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, that was me in the theatre as well. Uh, it was hard. Initially it was hard because, um, as you say, they're quite opinionated yes. and uh, we're, Christians are few and far between. We are yeah. a yeah. scattered breed in the theatre. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I have, I, you know, it's amazing how the Lord works, but I have especially over the last maybe 10 years, I've found people that I've connected with and then we find out we're both Christians mm. and we're yeah. like, we become this little pack of yes. you yeah. know, yeah. Christians together yeah. um, and that's been really wonderful. But it's been hard when people are opinionated about Christians or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. And sometimes, you know, social media is really, I find that really difficult yeah. Because um, theatre people, you know, they talk about being all inclusive and you know, yeah. be who you are, and but yet they're the first to criticise, you know, Christians and what they believe in this make believe man in the sky, and oh, yeah. it makes you know, it really yeah, makes yeah. you angry. It's yeah. really hard sometimes to hold your tongue, and I, I type something and then I quickly delete because I don't want to enter into yeah that cyber life that yes. they live. Um, so it has, it has had its challenges. Yeah. Um, where are some, there are times that I feel very isolated, but on the whole, it's been great. Yeah. People respect my, my beliefs. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I find that more and more, uh, coming into the world of theatre. More Christians are coming into the world of theatre. Yeah. Yes. So, um, Praise God. Yeah, yeah. But certainly, yeah, challenging at times. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, um... It's interesting to hear you talk about the slow burning kind of, kind of thing within that, um, performing arts. Um, yeah. 
because from not knowing you before this and and looking at what what you do and uh even in particular i know i've brought up carols a couple of times like at That's Carol, right. a lot of people do <laughs> I, I i love it i love it though it is, but like to me it was always super clear that you were very um confident in your belief mm. i would say oh. If only you knew how. Yeah, not and, that I was. Well, well, I think of I think of um, the memory of you, you sung "It Is Well" right at, mm. at Carols, which is like, which is powerful performance. I recommend everyone go and watch it. It's probably on YouTube. I'm assuming, but um, like to see like that's not a like just a carol. That's like a wor- mm. That's a worship song, right? Like that's yeah. like. And that's like like you've got approval from Channel Nine or whoever it is that puts this on that you you can do that. I, I always saw that as like a brave, bold thing to do, right? So it's yeah. really interesting to hear this slow burning effect. And I wonder, like, was there a point where things did change a bit with that? Like, was there a point where you're like, oh, from this moment on, I actually am going to actively pursue this, or is it because? you know, Carols by Candlelight, there is that little bit of Christian focus, right? Because it's yeah. it's Jesus' birth. So is yeah. that just the avenue that you can use and you're being quite quite good with that? Like, yeah. I don't know, like, yeah, was there a, a I, moment where I, things shifted a bit? Yeah, there was a, um, a time during um, our marriage that was a little bit difficult. Yeah. And that sort of forced me to really fling that, fly screen door open because yeah. I, I couldn't um, I couldn't fix it in my own strength and yeah. I was forced to um, you know through misfortune yeah it's funny how we that's where God really yeah yeah yep. asks us you know where, where yep. am I in your life yeah and it was through that that I then went okay you know I, ne- I need you. You know, yeah. I really need you. It's not just I, I, I like the idea of him or I yeah. like the, the, you know, the, the label of it. It's I need you in my life. I can't yeah. do this on my own. Yeah. And that sort of um, gave me a, a courage, I suppose, yeah. um, and that boldness that you talk about. I never feel like I'm being bold. Yeah. When I make those choices. So, you know, with carols, I present a song to them and they say, hmm, oh, it's a little too Christian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And you go, uh, hello, it's Christmas. It's yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Christ is in that. Like, that's yeah. why we have it. Um, so that that's challenging at times, but they've been incredible. They had, um, you know, from the time I did Your Grace Still Amazes Me, mm. uh, the, the first time, mm. Something switched, uh, something yeah, right. happened with them, with the mm. producers, with the organisers at Carol's, and I suppose they realised that, um, yeah, the Lord had a different idea for what, why I was there. Yeah. yeah. You know, it wasn't just about singing Christmas songs. It was about, you know, p- pushing that and, and yeah. exposing him to those who don't know him. Because, you know, I suppose we take for granted that, you know, we know Jesus, you know, but there are yeah. people out there that have never even heard his name. Yes. Um, so uh, I feel like it's my it's my job. I feel like mm. the Lord has made it my, that's my calling, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, there are times I get annoyed about carols because I feel like people think I just pop out of a box at carols by candlelight, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. put on, yep. put on yep. a frock, you know, and yeah. the hair, and uh, I sing a carol, and then I go pop, pop back in my box yeah, yeah, for yeah. the rest of the year, you know. And sometimes <laughs> I go, why, you know, Lord, there's more to me than just carols. <laughs> yes. But you know, it's such an important, it's such yep. an important night for Him. Yeah. yeah. His name, you know, yeah. and so yeah. From that point on, at carols, they've just they've really allowed me to. To do songs where I've gone, well, you are you going to yeah. let me sing that song? Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and yeah, and, and people um, know me for that. I think if I came out and sang Jingle Bells, people would go, "What? You what has happened yeah. to us?" Yeah. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. I think people expect me to push that yeah. every year. Yeah, 
And that's pressure in itself, can I say? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It's like, oh, you know, how do I better that? Or how do I make that a bigger <laughs> moment for him, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so... But, I hope but, that's answered your question. No, that's great. And thank you so much for sharing with yes. that as well. Like, um, it's amazing that, you know, you can have a moment of desperation because yeah. I feel the same. I relate to what you're saying. Like, mm. it's in a moment of desperation that I felt like my relationship with Jesus became something else, right? Like, yeah, it actually, yeah. like, I feel like you almost hit this fork in a road and it's like you can go one way or the other. That's um, it, that's it. But it's amazing that out of your desperation and your personal experience, mm-hmm. your focus back on Jesus is actually expanded into this huge thing of, like, basically, like, evangelising on national TV and yeah. these opportunities coming <laughs> through that. Like, it speaks to the power of, of God, really, and, yes. and, what yeah, he can, yeah. and what he can do to use us for that. Um, yeah. So it's really yeah. inspirational to hear, and I think that's, yeah. that, that's yeah, great. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. yeah, it just reminds me, I guess, of the power of God, and I think yeah. sometimes we get the novelty wears off or like, and you can't live in the like, God is so powerful. Like every <laughs> yeah. moment of every day. No, right? Like that no, just, that of course. Like, but like, I think it's good to be reminded of like, he is powerful. He is yeah. all creator. He has mm. everything in his hand. Right. Yeah. And if God's will is for something, there is nothing, there yeah. is nothing that can stop that. Right. Yeah, right. And so I love that. Like clearly God's uh, purpose at Carol's mm. in this, example right was like actually i want you to be singing these songs and we're like <gasps> is like channel nine gonna be okay with this and oh. the producers and what about this and what do people yeah. think or whatever and he's like ah, i've got this because yeah, i've got, got right Absolutely. and like this is what i want so and i think yeah. it was just reminded me of like hey this is god we're talking about yeah. Yeah. nothing yeah. can yeah. get in his way That's it. Yeah. And no sometimes, matter- i think sometimes we underestimate yes you know right. His Massively. power, you yep. know. Right. Yep. We think the miracles that he made, they were for the old days, but now yeah. we, don't, we don't really uh, give him that credit. But, you know, when we when you open yourself to him, he can do incredible things. Yeah. And he's the God of the secular mm. as well. Yeah. Like I yeah. think we almost expect it in like the Christian circles. We're like, mm. oh, yeah, classic God or whatever. But like mm. actually he's he's the God of all of creation, including the spaces where we think it's not going to happen. That's it's it. not possible. Yeah. There's no way, you know, whatever. He yeah. still has authority over that. And I, yeah. for me, I've just been reminded of that now because I kind of, I guess I expect it in Christian places, but yeah. in places w- in secular industry, sometimes yeah. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if he yeah. can do that. You know? I think I'm that's like, where ah. he works the most. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's where Absolutely. he's working, the, you know, that's where he's really performing the miracles. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say that. That's not even speaking about like like we're focused on the carols thing as well. Like speaking about even like the musical theatre scene that you're yeah. involved in, what he, yeah. uh, what I'm sure he's doing in that and the relationships you have and the power that he's putting through that too. Like, yeah, 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 it, it, yeah it's really good. And it's a yeah. good reminder, I think, yeah. for people that are listening that, you know, he, he will use you. Like, let yeah. him use you, you know? Like, yeah. let him use you. Um, yeah, we're the ones that get in the way of it. Exactly. <laughs> like, get out of yeah. the way. We're let the God ones do his well, thing. listen, I'm really not sure if you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've got this, I know. Stop questioning <laughs> I the I creator of us, you know? Like, exactly. stop questioning him. Exactly. Um, exactly. A, a follow-up question on that then yeah. is in your own personal spiritual life, like, yeah. to me, you sound like you're quite busy. There's the dog. It There's came. the dog. Hey. Max, shush up. <laughs> uh, shush. In your own okay. spiritual life. So you've got two kids, Yes. marriage, you're, you're doing a lot of stuff around the place. I know you, it's supposed well, to be. Cor- at the moment. Yeah, I know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're supposed to be in a musical right now, right? Cinderella? I'm supposed or- to be leaving. I was meant to be leaving on the 10th of October to go to Sydney to yeah. do Cinderella, which is, yes. you know, I haven't done a big uh, multi million dollar musical since Mamma Mia. I've done yeah. little yeah, right. musicals in between. Yeah. And that's like. 18, 17 years ago. Wow. Yeah. So to have that opportunity and then damn COVID. Yeah. But, you know, it's happening next year. That's it. Postponed. So postponed. We'll get there. Postponed. We'll you know, get everything there. works out for the best in the end. I'm That's right. I'm a believer of that. So, yeah, and I think you need a trip to Sydney next year. We'll go see. Yeah, we'll Sylvie go see. Definitely, Cinderella. definitely. Um, so 
<laughs> very busy in normal world, not when COVID's around, yes. obviously. But so how important is finding that individual space to work on your relationship with God? And so how do you important. find it? How do you so find in, it, right? So important. And I'm just really bad at doing that yeah. myself. That's yep. why I, I, I love Ken <laughs> and Lynn <laughs> because they're always looking for ministry opportunities. And yeah. that really forces yep. me to go, oh, yeah, that's what I, you know, I'm a bit yeah. lazy in that yeah. way. Um, yep. I shouldn't really admit that. Um, no, I think we all are, though, right? Like, we're all you know, like that. I go, yeah. oh, yes, that's right, Lord, sorry. And I, you know, pray or, oh, yes, oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah I always need that readjustment. Yes. Refocus, refocus. Yeah. And Ken does that a lot for me. Oh, good. Uh, he, he's been a heaven sent. So, um, but, yeah, it's so important to to have that moment for yourself and have yeah. that moment with fellow fellow believers. Yes. Because yeah. sometimes you, you, some people, like myself, find it hard to do it on your own. Yeah. 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 And and when you're with your your group, yeah. your your people, um, it's a, yeah, it's a great thing to have that, that network around you, that support yeah. around you. Yeah. yeah. And I think about when you were mentioning in the, like in the theatre, how you've found those pockets of people and how important they would be in in this. So yeah, um, yeah, that's great advice to anyone listening that is is wanting to do the secular thing, might be a bit nervous. You find those pockets and God gives you those people that help you through that too. And I think, you know, as a Christian, I don't believe that we should only be with Christian yeah. people. Agreed. Yeah. You know, I think it's it's our opportunity to go out into mm. the world, to yeah. to socialise with those that don't believe. Give them yep. the opportunity to see how God has changed your life. Yeah. Um, not by talking it, by being it. Yeah. And then yeah. they go, oh, I want to, you know, what's that about you that I, I can see, you know? Yeah. Uh, you, uh, they ask you questions. Oh, oh, do you go to church, do you? Oh, what do you believe? And, yeah. you know, then you have the opportunity to minister to those people that don't know him because yeah. it's, it's great to be with Christians, but, you know, we want other people to know Jesus as yeah. well. And if we yeah. only hang out with our fellow believers... Then yeah. we've, I don't believe we're doing Jesus' work at all. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think we forget that we need to be in the world, right? Like That's it's still absolutely. in the world, not of it, yeah. but we're in it. We need to be yeah. in it. So don't, don't remember, shelter yourself. I remember a friend of mine saying that, oh, she didn't want to go anywhere or be with anyone because she found it was too um, too much of a temptation. Yeah. Mm. Yep. yep. And fair enough. The, like, yep. You know, the world is tempting. Yeah. Yep. But the, the, the real... The real aim and the real joy is being out in the world and being strong in who you are and who you belong to. I yeah. mean, that's where you, you have victory, not by locking yourself away. Yeah. yeah. Because anyone can do good by locking themselves away and not talking to anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. it's about being out there and still, you know, keeping your eyes focused on him and your heart, yeah. your heart yeah. with him. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Totally. Totally. And I think... Um, it's important. I think sometimes it can be intimidating when you're in a secular world all the time. Like, I mean, because obviously some people are, in, are around Christians less than others, right? Like some people are like, I'm with Christians all the time. Some people are like, I kind of hardly have, I don't really have any Christian friends, right? Yeah. And all this. And I think it's just such an important thing to remember of actually like, yes, yes, you want those support systems around you. Yes, you need this and that and to stay rooted. But actually, like, you have the Holy Spirit with you and he is powerful and you can do this. You know, sometimes mm. I just think being in those places can be intimidating, but actually go, just a reminder, I guess, if anyone's listening in those spaces, yeah. like, you have the Holy yep. Spirit who is powerful yep. and all yep. you need. As mm. much as those other things are, like, amazing and so helpful, you have everything you need yeah, yeah in him. Going yeah. to his tea, right? That's right. 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 That's right. That's yeah. one of my favorite, favorite readings. That great yeah. is he who lives in me than he who lives in the world. Because we we are in the world. We are of the yeah. world. But yeah. we have him. We have Yeah. Him. Yeah, Look at this it. theme coming out about like God's power and authority in this yes. episode. Who would have yeah. thought? Boom. <laughs> Getting exactly. all this fun. Yeah, it's I happening. know, I'm like, preach it. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> 
now, you spoke of the importance of Ken, basically, with your own kind of spiritual journey, I guess. Ken Waterworth. Ken Waterworth. Um, and the lovely Lynn. And the lovely, and the lovely Lynn. Lynn. Don't forget Lynn. Ken wouldn't no. be anything without Lynn. Uh, yes, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, you would be something, but maybe not as much of a something. <laughs> um, can you kind of speak to how did the relationship start with the Salvos? Because you've done, like, Heaps. a lot of stuff with the Salvos. Like, you've travelled the world doing Salvos. Yes, absolutely. definitely. And I think, like, uh, When You Believe, right, the album with Melbourne Staff Band, you've, you, you went to um, London mm-hmm. and America, I reckon. Yeah, did you O2, do? yeah, went yeah. to LA like, with them. You are an honorary member of the Salvos. So, like, I was even given a bonnet. Oh, <laughs> you're in then. You're really in. I don't even have a bonnet. <laughs> so how did this begin? And what, like, what is this? <laughs> you know? What is this? I know it's a strange, strange thing. Um, it happened through the Christmas gift that the Salvos were doing yep. every year. Yep. And Ken approached um, my management. So I know Ken's brother. Um, yes. through the theatre very well. Yes. And um, so Ken cont- contacted Mark, my manager, and um, asked me if I would do a Christmas gift. And it was through that um, we obviously, you know, got to know each other. And after the concert we had a meeting at a cafe where Ken would debrief. He loves debriefing. <laughs> He loves debriefs, yep, he sure does. Debrief, yeah. <laughs> so we were debriefing on the concept, what worked, what didn't work, uh, how could we make it better, you know. Mm-hmm. And all this time I was thinking, I'd really love to do a Christian album, but I just, I was really nervous about, yeah. you, yep. you know, talking about before making that Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. You know, really saying I'm a Christian singer, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I was very nervous about doing that. And anyways, but I, I had that thought in my mind, went to this meeting, Ken was debriefing, and during this meeting he said, you know, how would you feel about the possibility of recording an album uh, with the Melbourne Staff Band? And I said, oh, I've, I've just been thinking about that. <laughs> And I said, I'd love to do a Christian album. He said, oh, well, yes, of course, a Christian album would be fantastic. He was yeah. thinking maybe a mixture of stuff. and yeah. um, So that's how the sort of album thing came along, where we yeah. recorded yeah. When You Believe. And we purposely made that album a mixture of uh, secular songs and Christian songs because I wanted to reach others yeah. than just mm. the Christian people. Yes, yep. yes, um, yeah, yeah. And I love it when a song speaks of God but doesn't actually say his name. But yeah. you know, you yeah. know that yeah. it's God they're talking about. Um, so we did a few of those type of songs. And, you know, I did nine years of um, A Christmas Gift with the Salvos where I would host it and perform at it. And it was through the, that time where I was invited with the band to go to the O2 Arena in um yeah. In London, and oh my gosh, I've never been in a room with so many salvos in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. And, uh, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, I was sitting with Ken and the, some of the band, and we were watching the, um, I think it was the first, the opening ceremony yeah. of that time, went over four days or something. Mm. And um, the general uh-huh. and, uh-huh. He, and his wife walked yes. in, and they were going like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for, for everyone who can't I just realised we're a podcast so and Sylvie's uh, action is that uh, she's pointing up pointing to the sky you know yeah. I yeah. turned to Ken and I said what's he pointing at and <laughs> he said oh it's a salute it's a salute yeah. to, to yeah. God you know Oh, well, let me tell you, I've used that ever since. That weekend, <laughs> that weekend I was there, I was pointing. <laughs> pointing. There you go. Yeah. Um, so great. I also had a lady sit next to me and she said, oh, um, and what Salvo Church do you go to? And uh, I said, oh, I'm not a Salvationist. I go to a Baptist church. Oh, she said, why aren't you a Salvationist? You should be a Salvationist. <laughs> oh, 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 I was in the bad books. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was very privileged to be there because, you know, generally they are salvationists that are there. And, um, yeah, yeah, it was an incredible time. Um, Yeah, yeah, I've had wonderful opportunities with the band and I love being with them. 
um, yeah, so we hope to continue that relationship. Yeah. That's awesome. That's very That's good. good. And you it know means what, COVID's that, over. It means that we can twist your arm to get to a podcast with us too, right? That's right. So we're, here we are. Here we are. How things work. It worked And we're out. very grateful. We are very, very grateful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think I guess I have probably only one more question. Um, is... We've, you've shared so much and yeah. like, it's been amazing. So thank yes. you so much. I do talk a bit, don't I? No, no, it's great. Oh, I love, I love it. it. We've said this before. So it's, it. it's literally all we can do. We're a podcast. Yeah, that's it's literally the only thing we can do. So you may yeah. as well do a lot of it. Yeah, that's right. Um, what advice would you give um, either to your younger self or potentially to people who are Christians, who are singers, who are musical theatre, actors, performers, whatever, or, or anyone really, I guess. Do you have advice that you would have given your younger self that other people may be in similar situations? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, <laughs> advice I would give to my younger self, um, I wish I knew God earlier, mm. the way I know him now. Yeah. Uh, would have saved, I think, a lot of heartache along the way <laughs> yeah. for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another bit of advice is be proud of who you are and don't change yeah. for anyone because this yeah. industry is so fickle that yeah. you, you're always trying to fit into what they want, you know, yeah. and trying to be good enough to for them. Yeah. Um, you're always chasing that yeah. that thing, you know. Um, yeah. So I would be I would say to be secure in who I I am. I wish I was as a young girl. Mm. Um, for anyone else, oh, goodness me. I, You know, you really have to have a calling on your life to be a performer, to be an, an artist, because it's not the easiest life in the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's full of uh, competition and, yeah, it's a difficult, it's a difficult existence in that you... You don't know where the work's coming from. It's yeah, not like you've yeah, got, yeah. you know, that security of a weekly wage going in. You're yeah. constantly, you know, on the phone trying to work out gigs. And yeah. so it, it's it's hard. So you've got to really, it's got to be something in you yeah, that you yeah. love and you can't be without it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's real. yeah, it's got to be a calling on your life. And, mm. um yeah, sometimes I, I think, don't do it. Yeah, <laughs> don't yeah. go there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. Just, yeah, I don't know. Have great people around you that can support you, that can advise you. Make sure, you know, you've got people who are in the industry that know it so mm. that you're not going in there blind. I was mm. a bit like the guinea pig of the family because yeah. I was the first one to do something like this, yeah. um, which which was exciting, but it yeah. was really hard because we didn't yeah. know. My parents didn't even know what we were doing, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so in that regard, I would say, you know, make sure you've got people around you that know the industry and can advise you where yeah. to go, what to do. And um, if you're a Christian in the secular world, just... Keep strong, stand firm on the rock. Yeah, not yeah. on sinking sand, but on the rock. And which yeah. is hard. It's hard because there's so much sinking sand around. You know, yes. and you've, yeah. you've, you've, yeah. you've got to. Yeah, you've really got to find yourself and and be strong and sure in yourself too, and sure in in who your creator is and mm. what what plans he has for your life. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, very wise. dropping truth bombs over here. Yeah, and and. So we, we do, basically, when we sum up an interview, we like to basically throw honour at our guest, right? And and it's so, uh, it, it's amazing that you just brought up, like, building your house on the rock, standing on the rock, right? Because I literally had to get the Bible verse up as you were speaking, because when I was thinking about you, that's what I was thinking about. Hmm. Um, and so huh. I... Cool. I'm actually, Me, I'm going to read it. I'm actually going to read it. I wasn't going to read the Bible verse, but I'm going to read it. So... Do it. Uh, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. 
And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because mm. it had been founded on the rock. Mm. Um, that's what I think of when, when I'm thinking about honour for you because I just want to honour you for building your house on the rock. Like you've been through the stormy like times. That yeah, <laughs> that's right. It doesn't mean that we stay straight, right? You sway and you move. It's yeah. like a stormy water. Like you, you, you're not, yeah. you're not stagnant, but you have built your house on that rock. And I, and I think back to you know you're saying you always knew kind of God existed. Um, that in itself is almost building your house on the rock, right? Like, and then and then when these trials come, it's, you you start to realize that foundation and the strength of that. And I I just want to honor you for being in uh-huh. these crazy secular environments. Yeah. Um. That like I know wouldn't be permitting to like Christian values all the time. Right. And I just, yeah. I just want to honor you for standing strong. I want to honor you for being that person that when I watch, it's my family tradition to watch carols. So I always bring it up. But when I, <laughs> when I watch carols and it's like, Sylvie's coming out next, we go, great. This is a representation of us. Like that's mm-hmm. what we feel like. I, and I just think that's all due to the fact that you have a heart for God and you couldn't be on this rock without your reliance on God, right? That's what the rock is. And so I just want to honour you for doing Thank that. Thank you. I think it is really, really, it is a hard thing to do, um, to basically be vulnerable and humble enough to give it up to God, and you've done that. So I just want to honour you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I want to say thank you for coming on the podcast, number one. Yes. But also for for being so honest and just, and yeah. I mean, I think sometimes... Yep. As people in life, we like to be like, yeah, it's it's like the Instagram right life, right? Where like it's my life is just a highlight reel, and I've got my whole life together, and it's just great. But you've you've come and you've been honest, and you've like, yeah. I don't always get it right, and sometimes it's a mess. And but you know, like God accepts me as I am, and I just want to honor that and say thank you for being true and honest and being like, this is real and this is me, yeah. and I know that we all relate to that. And I know that'll touch somebody. I'm sure somebody who's listening has been like, oh, I just needed to hear that, you know, that actually we're all, we're all a bit broken. Um, But also something you said earlier in the podcast, and I wrote it down because I loved it so much, Mm -hmm. um, is you were talking about, I think it was when we were talking about carols and you said, how do I make this better for him? Mm. Right. And I, I loved that because your focus is not on like, how do I give a better technical performance? Oh, like, I'm sure you have those things anyway, but I like, do. I yeah. do. It's yeah. very particular. <laughs> right. Right. Like they exist, but your focus is how do I make it better for him? And like giving God the glory. Yeah. And I yep. just, God's work in your life has been so evident in this podcast. Mm. Like the way he has moved, I've been like, oh my goodness. Yes. Look at that. Boom, 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 boom. And it's amazing. So I guess just thank you for being yourself. Thank you for being true to who you are in all these different aspects of your life and letting God work through that. I just want to honor that so much and just encourage Mm. you and bless you and bless your ministry and everything you do. Pray God's favor would be on you. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. My pleasure. I feel like we're a legit podcast now because we've had you on it, you know, like it's... That's right. (laughs) It's my first podcast. Oh! Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news.